when everyone, everything, and even the very fiber of your bone is telling you you are not good enough. The Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I'm going to be painting a picture today, one that a lot of us are familiar with, riddled with despair, desolation, and disappointment. I'm going to be telling us about someone I'll call Nkem. Nkem is an average Nigerian woman, good looking, smart. She graduated university and went through the motions, did NYSE, got a good job, and eventually found the one. They tied the knot, but if you ask Nkem, she will tell you that was the easiest part. In this part of the world, on becoming a wife, there's some expectations on you, chief of which is to become a mother. For Nkem, this was proven to be a challenge. After the very first year, people say, oh, they are still on their honeymoon, so let's let them be. The, so the second year, they say, mm, maybe they want to enjoy themselves a bit more. But by the third year, tongues are beginning to wag. People are beginning to ask questions. The mother-in-law is beginning to ask her son, Baba, how far was happening? <laughs> by this time, Nkem started going to church. She started crying, she started saying all the prayers, doing all the fasts. 21 days, 30 days, 45 days. She fasted so much that her husband was thinking she was going to disappear. But by the fourth year, it seemed like heavens had heard her cries. The skies opened up. And on one Wednesday morning, she felt unusually queasy. And she went to take a pregnancy test. It came out positive. She was agog with excitement, but she decided to do it again. It still came out positive. Now she called her husband to share the good news. He was ecstatic. He called everyone that was willing to listen. He called his mother, those people in the village that said he would not make it. He called them all to share the good news. He treated and came like her neck, never allowing her to stress. Five months down the line, tragedy struck. Nkem woke up one night, screaming frantically. There was blood everywhere. Her husband whisked her away and rushed her to the hospital. Hours later, the doctors confirmed the words. She had a miscarriage. What do you do at that point? This was a terrible blow to the family. Everyone was destroyed. Now, they had me to point fingers at. The in-laws were at the gates, like barbarian, asking for a child, demanding blood. But Nkem persevered. She kept going. And luckily, she took in again. This time, her husband was taking no chances. He treated her like an egg, never allowing her to carry anything. He would shout at the maid, Ekaike, would you pick that thing from her? He would say, let me help you carry this baby. But unfortunately, she lost it again. She was at the brink of collapse. She had reached the breaking point. It was like she had been sentenced to the penitentiary of barrenness without possibility of parole. It was a disrupting feeling for her. The only thing that held her in this point was the fact that her husband stood beside her like a rock, never wavering, never asking questions, never pointing fingers. They continued. And in the sixth year, she took in again. This time, everyone was holding their breath, 
knowing the experience of the past. The first month went by. The fourth month went by. The sixth month went by. The ninth month came. This seemed like it was it. One night, she jumped up from bed, shouting. But it turned out it was just her water that broke. Her husband rushed her to the hospital, stood by her side during the labor. And after 20 grilling hours of labor, Nkem said, I'm tired. I can't do this again. She begged her husband to take her out of here. But the doctor said to him, push, push. We can see the head of the baby. If you don't push, the baby will die. And Kim said, I'm tired. Her husband looked her in the eye and said to him, push. For everyone who has ridiculed you, push. For everyone who has brought shame to this family, you can push. For everyone who has called you barren, you can push. And she summoned all the energy she had in her, all the strength, and she pushed and pushed. And a couple of minutes later, they heard the cry of joy. You came had prevailed. She was now the mother of a bouncing baby boy. Now I say that to say this, that some of us might be in that place where you have tried so hard, you feel like you just want to quit. But I implore you, you might be at that place where the head of your baby is showing. And if you don't push, your baby will die. So I say to you, push, push, push. It was my